What's up guys, it is Friday and you know what that means, it is time for another No Bullshit Review. Continuing on in the theme for the last couple of weeks, you saw the unboxing, you saw me smoke the Muestra de Saka, the Bewitched. This week, we are in the black. And by that I mean the Mi Querida Black, which is the third iteration of the Mi Querida series. And uh, I have smoked this one before, as you guys saw in the unboxing video with my dad. But I didn't really dig as deep as I could have. Hence why I'm making this video, because I want to pay a lot more attention to what I'm experiencing with this cigar. It is a nice, long, leisurely smoke. As you can see right here, I'm going to be giving you as much of every nuance as I possibly can that is in this tasty little treat. So please join me as I uh, once again enjoy the... Uh, Lovely little uh, treats from Saka Claus himself. Pretty apropos for Christmas, so we're just going to smoke, drink, and be merry for tomorrow. We're going to do the same thing again. So, anyways, cue that intro. What's up, everybody? You are watching Dad Smoking Cigars, sponsored by StogieLives.com, cigar social media, and of course, Casa Cueva Cigars from our casa to yours. Thank you so much for tuning in for another video. Don't need to go too much into what I mentioned before because you have heard it all already from the unboxing to the Bewitch to now smoking the Mi Querida Black. This is my second time smoking this cigar, but as I mentioned before, I said I wasn't going to say that, but I said it anyway. <laughs> as previously mentioned, um, this is my second time smoking it, so I'm going to be uh, taking, again, a much more detailed look into the cigar. And I, like last time, they gave uh, a nice little spec sheet when they sent me all these goodies. So I'm going to get in a little bit into the details of the Mi Querida Black. And I, and I apologize uh, ahead of time if it seems like I started at one height and then started to sink lower. I'm using a different chair. It's actually my desk chair. It's a lot more comfy, but apparently the hydraulics don't work as well as the other ones. So anyways, moving on. Black is the third iteration of this style of blend within our Mi Querida family of Puros. It retains the soul of the two other ligas within the line. However, with the addition of a very select grade of Honduran grown Habano C. Tripa incorporated into the blend. Hmm. Steve goes on to say that he believes this is the closest possible recreation of the smoking experience that beguiled him in his early cigar years, but executed without the commercial constraints of cost or the need to craft the large volume of cigars Hatsa needed to produce to be viable. So, okay, there you go. Obviously, as evidenced by the band, the packaging, and the fact that I've said it over and over again, this cigar is called the Mi Querida Black, but there's also another name for this smoke, and that is the... Saka Khan. Saka. Saka. Saka Khan. Okay, sorry. It says, I have just, I have dubbed this Vitola, so it's the Vitola that has the nickname. The Saka Khan is a nickname that he was given during his early days in the Navy, and it pays tribute to his own formative years. So, I mean, sure, why the hell not? That is kind of cool. The, the, the la Steve, Steve Saka's, you know, surname just seems to evoke a lot of different spin-offs and different things. Like I said, I called him Saka Claus. Pretty sure I'm not the first one to call him that. Saka Khan, Shaka Khan, something that I think some people say without even knowing that, that she is a very talented and well-known singer, but whatever. You did not come to hear me talk about that stuff. You came to hear me talk about the cigar. So I'm gonna go ahead and get to cutting and lighting this, uh, this, uh, this. <laughs> I was trying to come up with another clever nickname and it just didn't work. Just like the uh, Bewitched and uh, I accidentally, the first time I smoked it I accidentally ripped this off while pulling the cello off. It has a nice little pigtail at the cap. And I was going to redo the makeup which I totally just spaced on because I was just too enamored with the nickname of the Vitola so here we go. The Kappa, the cap is a Connecticut Broadleaf number one dark. The wrapper is a San Andreas Negro and it has Nicaraguan, Honduran and Dominican fillers so. Don't have to sell me on the cigar. I've already smoked it, and I am down to smoke it again. So let's just go right now. Bye-bye, little pigtail. Perfectly punched. 
pigtail right there. Mm. Such a chocolatey cold draw. It's very tasty. Dried fruit, dates, raisins. Love those flavors just from the cold draw alone. So let's light it up and see if those flavors remain or if they dissipate. As Ric Flair has said many a time. That's the stuff. That is the stuff. No doubt about it. And that is not an exaggeration in just, you know, blowing, you know, blowing smoke up the, uh, the backside of Dunbarton Tobacco and Trust because they were kind enough to send me this stuff. That would be a huge disservice to them and myself. Um, the reality is that that is the stuff. Just those first puffs, the, that first bit of smoking is absolutely delightful, rich, and dark. Like I, I mentioned, I did mention in the unbox unboxing video, a very rich and dark kind of flavor profile. And it is technically a full body cigar, full flavored, I think, is actually more along uh, what they said it was as opposed to like full strength, full flavor. Either way, full. And it is definitely full, full of flavor, full of richness, just, just delicious. Absolutely delicious. It is a very, very smooth and light retro hail, opening it up to you know very bready notes right from the beginning with that cocoa just a mm, just so much cocoa with a hint of like espresso a little bit of earthiness on the back end just that kind of and I, I might even be detecting just a tiny bit of leather back there as well now what I love about the cigar and specifically the Vitola it being dubbed Sokka Khan by uh, Steve Sokka himself um, it is very much, at least from my perspective, intended to be a long, luxurious, leisurely, lovely, yes, I'm alliterating there, uh, smoke. And the idea is to be able to kick back, relax, and truly enjoy. And I am indeed enjoying. And as much as I love to be in front of the camera and talking to you guys about how much I'm enjoying it, I'm looking forward to turning the camera off so that way I can just enjoy it without any external influences whatsoever. Man, and then check out that burn. Not what you call razor straight, but really no peaks or valleys to speak of. Nice straight burn, solid construction. This is a very well made and crafted cigar. Yeah. Indubitably. I love this chair, but it makes me feel so short. <laughs> it's just comfortable. That's why I like it so much. The other chair is, you know, functional, but not as comfy. But I'm not here to review the chair. I'm here to review the cigar. And the cigar is just... It's actually better than the first time I smoked it. And that's no exaggeration. No bullshit. I honestly feel like it's... Yeah even better than the first time when I smoked it because I feel like I'm just I, I'm in a I'm in more of a uh, controlled environment I guess you could say last time I smoked it I was I was at my dad's and I love spending time with my dad as you guys know time with my dad is incredibly important and it's one of the most valuable things in my life and I love the fact that we can continue to bond over cigars so yeah I wasn't paying as much attention to the cigar as I am right now so here I am paying far more attention and getting far more out of it I think than the first time around still getting that same bread especially with the retro hill opening it up and that retro hill once again still isn't harsh it's gotten a slight bit of bite which I know sounds funny when I say it that way it's gotten a little bit more bite to it than when I first did it when I first did the uh, retro hill there isn't a whole lot of spice. I will say that it is going very well with my coffee, which you can't see right now. Hold on. The only reason why I decided to show you is because 
I am drinking coffee out of my Dunbarton Tobacco and Trust mug, which this is my favorite mug now. I mean, look at it. It is a sexy mug. It is awesome. Handmade. You can put this thing in the fucking dishwasher. Um, I'm not gonna, because I'm scared that that, that I, I'm gonna do that and it's gonna come out looking like shit. Um, I want to preserve this mug, so I will wash it by hand forever, but it's a beautiful mug. And I'm very thankful to the people from uh, Dunbarton for sending it to me, so cheers. But it is pairing very nicely. I do not drink my coffee black. I get made fun of for that by people whose opinion I don't really care for anymore. But <laughs> um, I do like to put creamer in my coffee. I like my coffee a bit sweet, and it goes quite nicely with the cigar. Some nutty flavors there. Some hint of earthiness. Slight hint of leather. Some more of that cocoa. Bready, 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 bready. Lots of bread. <laughs> but it's it's just it's it's such a luxurious just flavor experience. Um, which I really believe that is something you can sum up Dunbarton's uh, cigars. Uh, or the, How you could sum up the cigars from Dunbarton. Let me rephrase that. Um, they are just luxurious in the flavor and experience. Um, good tagline. Luxurious in flavor and experience. I mean, really. I mean, that's it's a good tagline. If you guys just at Dunbarton decide to use that, I would like at least some royalties, okay? So, please. <laughs> but it's true. Uh, luxurious in flavor and experience. And it is just... I've never had a bad stock of cigar. I've smoked quite a few of them. I had the pleasure of getting to enjoy the Mi Querida Red last year. The... Um, the Brulee Blue, um, which was delicious, and I got to enjoy the Unstolen Valor, which was excellent, just excellent. You'll have to check out my uh, review of that from last year. Very good cigar, but there's still a number of Saka cigars I have yet to try, and I hope that I can change that very, very soon. But as for right now, yeah, this 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 is going even better than when I first smoked it and wow just and you know another thing I want to point out is that in between uh, filming segments I decided to go on the dad smoking cigars TikTok and do my first ever live stream on there I just got over a thousand subscribers on TikTok so jumped on a live and even during at one point had to go back inside the house left the cigar on my uh, ashtray I haven't had to relight this baby once I let it sit for like five minutes or so was still smoking when I came back so yeah and it has been burning almost razor straight the entire time have not had to do anything to correct it the only uh, <laughs> If you can call it a negative experience, the only negative experience I've had is that I ashed all over myself right before I went on my live stream on TikTok. Had a nice big ash going on, and then the moment I turned, just blah, right in my lap. So, happens to the best of us. I know that, but truly, I'm I'm digging this all over again, and it feels even better than the first time around. So. Better than the first. Oh, that's not the way to say it. Well, this feels like the first time. But in this case, better than the first time. Better than the very first time. Okay, I'll stop. <laughs> you guys know you like my singing. Come on, on down to the end of the Mikeri de Black. And um, it's starting to get a little hot. I'm not going to lie. So getting down towards the end and only about mm, not much left but I want to smoke it down to the nub but we'll see how hot it remains or how hot it stays just because obviously I don't want to burn my lips as I'm finishing it off did have to relight a couple times because I let it sit for too long while I was just relaxing and um, yeah man it started to transition 
from some of those same flavors that I was describing earlier. Really rich, dark flavors. The cocoa, the leather, the earth, a little bit of spice. It's gotten pretty spicy towards the end. Um, it <laughs> Potent. It's potent towards the end, definitely. Uh, a bit more spice than what I was having at all. And the spice was subtle throughout, but as I'm getting down towards the end, it's getting close to peppery. A lot of that breadiness is gone. Slight bit remains, not a lot, but that heat is dissipating. It's not so hot to the lips. Um, so I may be able to smoke it down pretty far. We'll see how far I get. But overall, like I said, this time around, my second time smoking the cigar, much better than the first. The first time was great. The second time was even better. Um, I don't know if it's because I was just a little bit more chill this time and I was a little bit more focused on the cigar. And I was able to kind of relax in my own special way in my, in, in my man cave studio, whatever you want to call it. Um, and I didn't have as many distractions of, you know, not, not conversing with anyone. So I'm just kind of in my own element, in my zone. And I was able to get a little bit more out of the cigar this time, I think. Ooh, can't tell if that was the heat or if it's that that's kind of the peppery spice that I'm getting. Might be a little bit of both. But yeah, it's starting to get kind of warm again towards the, uh, towards the end. And yeah, we'll see how far I make it. But the first two thirds of the cigar were just full of that crazy rich flavor. Um, and it kind of maintained a little bit of a sweetness and a sm it was really smooth. Now it's kind of gotten, as my dad has said, our friend Earl, who lives in Kansas City, it's gotten a bit bitey towards the end, a little bit more bite, a little bit more spice, a little bit more of just something that hits a little bit harder. But honestly, it's delicious either way. Very good smoke, getting kind of a toastiness in the flavor profile as I'm nearing the end. But suffice it to say, this has been a very luxurious experience. Steve Saka has nailed it again. This iteration of the Mikirita is excellent. I love it. I'm enjoying it. I'm really glad that I that I got to try it. And it's a pleasure and a privilege, honestly. I want to say thank you again to the wonderful people at Dunbarton Tobacco and Trust for sending me this little care package. You know, once again, grateful for my mug, grateful for the cigars, grateful for the um, the opportunity. And it's really awesome that uh, even if it's only once a year, I mean, gosh, once a year is more than enough to get sent something as cool as this. So thank you guys very, very much. Um, I look forward to whatever else you guys put out. Um, and I hope that I get the opportunity to try it and tell people about it. Dunbar makes some damn good cigars. So no bullshit. I'm going to give this cigar a 93 out of 100. I gave the, uh, the Bewitched a 90 out of 100. This one is, you know, obviously three points up because, yeah, the flavor, it just packs a little bit more. It hits differently, and it is just an excellent cigar through and through. I really enjoyed it, and yeah, excellent. Absolutely excellent. Thank you guys for tuning in. I really appreciate it. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you haven't already, please do subscribe and like the video, and please comment. I love interacting with you guys all the time I reply to every single comment so please start a conversation in the comments below I would love to jump in and chat with you guys but that's it for this review guys thank you again for tuning in I hope you're all well I hope you're keeping it smoky that's it guys as always I will catch you in the next one